everyone, this is Baylor Ray, and in this video, I want to go through and try to teach you Backbone JS, which is a really hot topic, and there's lots of people talking, working, and making tutorials and all that kind of stuff, and I, I don't really want to try to compete with any of those. What I want to do instead is kind of talk about a Teach Backbone from jQuery, and there's an article on that, and it's a really popular article, and I don't want to steal that. Um, the way I want to do this is we're going to go through some an application that is pretty bait common, commonly done, I imagine, with jQuery and stuff. And I want to rebuild it with Backbone, except instead of just like, just let's do all this Backbone stuff, and we're going to use models and collections and routers and views and all this stuff, and we're just going to throw it all on the page. Instead, I want to look at it. We're going to try to figure out a way to make it work with just jQuery, not all the way. And then we're going to introduce Backbone really slowly. And this is actually how I've learned Backbone. I'm not great at Backbone. Uh, probably not good enough to really give a tutorial on it. But I think the way I learned it is a pretty good way of learning it. And I thought I'd share that. So what I did to learn Backbone is I, I was really kind of afraid of it. Because the tutorials don't really explain, well, this is how you use a model and this is how you use a collection. They're more or less just like... Well, a model connects to this URL that you set up with your routes in your application with Ruby Run Rails or Code Igniter or something like that, or Laravel is a new one. And you, it downloads this stuff and it gives you the JSON and you use this template and you and use all this stuff and it doesn't make any sense. Like, how do I do this with an application that I will, how do I implement this or add this to something I've always done, you know? So that's what we're going to do. So I have this application here. This is how it looks before we load. What it does, the what I want it to do at least, is I want to be able to change this category here. And what or I'm sorry, oh man. If I change this select box for the quantity, I want it to update the total over here. So this is what we're gonna build, and we're gonna look at something pretty similar. Or I'm gonna build this with J jQuery, right, or just at least part of it. And we're going to look and figure out, um, we'll just go from there. So this is how I'm doing this. I'm using an application called CodeKit, which is, it's Mac only, but it's, it's pretty good. It's actually very good. And what I have set up here is it just, CodeKit lets me do this important stuff. So that's that. What I have in this HTML markup, though, aside from this special thing here, is I'm outputting this table and in each table row where I'm actually just displaying this information you can imagine how you do this with PHP or something just putting out pulling from the database looping over and putting out a title the price the total and the quantity and stuff but in addition to what's pretty common I'm also putting the JSON version of what's here as a data attribute on this row so this is something, this is pretty much the only real change that you would have to make to make this work um, with your existing markup. So what I'm going to do is, after I have jQuery loaded and stuff, I'm going to put some line breaks in here so I have some room to type. I'm going to pull out, and I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to be very simple and say select on change. We're going to run a function. And we're going to get the quantity from this dot value. And I'm actually going to turn this into an integer because it doesn't come out as an integer. And I'm going to grab the price. And the price in this case is just going to be uh, just put in there by hand and or fixed, I guess. And what I want to do is let me get back over to Brat Firefox. When I change this, I want to update this number right here. So what I'm going to do is just say this dot parent up to the table row dot find and you can see these have a class of item total. So we're going to find this item total and this is kind of long. We're going to update the text and I'm going to use the an accounting the accounting JS framework here or library or whatever you call it. Uh, it's really very good. <laughs> it's very very good. It's uh, I really like it. So if you if you haven't looked at this before, just open this up, except this is now yo, but just open this up and you can actually look at it. 
Okay, so accounting and format money, and I'm just going to throw in the quantity times the price. Okay, so this should work out of the box. I changed this four dollars. Now this one doesn't work properly, but what happens? It's pretty basic stuff. So the way I want to describe this is Backbone has views. And the way I like to think of them, if you've worked with model view control, the MVC framework style, which is kind of common nowadays, you know, you have a controller that works pretty much usually with one model and you use whatever logic and you output whatever's needed for that one thing. The controller, so what I'm saying is the controller works for one specific area of the site and you have multiple controllers to handle multiple things. Backbone uses views. And a view, I like to think of it as more of a view controller. And they used to call it that, and I think it was controllers and view controllers, now views. The way I like to think of it is if we look at this right here, this JavaScript, you can think of the view as our entire window here, this whole page. Basically, what we're doing is we're filtering down to a select box, which is this right here, and we're manipulating the DOM around that. So we have this whole big window here and we're grabbing the select and then once we have some information from that, then we're bubbling back up to the table row. So we're, we have this whole window, we go down to this tiny little area and I'm, I'm kind of thinking in my mind, I could show this with, with uh, Firebug. So we have, we have the whole HTML page and then we bubble down to the select box and then we're bubbling up to the table row and then we're going over here. So what happens is with backbone views, really what you would have is you would work your whole view area would be just the table row. All this is everything that you want to work with is contained in this little area of the page. Your page is built up with multiple view controllers or views. And a view is a small individual piece, like it's this table row. And this table row pays attention and says, when I change the select, bubble back up to myself and then find the item total. And you do the same thing with this one. And you say, find the select, bubble up to the table row, and change this item total here. So I really like the way, that this is the best way I know to think of it, because otherwise it's really weird and complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to rebuild this basic functionality. Now, of course, it breaks here, of course, but this one works, and we're going to make it where it works on both of them pretty simply. And we're going to do it with Backbone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use CoffeeScript. And, I'm, and I, I'm, I really kind of thought, well, should I use it? Should I not use it? And I decided to go ahead and use it. And the reason for that is because Backbone looks really good and is very easy to work with when you use CoffeeScript. Now, it's a personal preference. If you don't know CoffeeScript, what I suggest doing is when I get to parts, and sometimes you'll recognize things you'll say, oh, I see what he's doing there, kind of, I guess. But when you see something I'm not doing, Literally just copy the line, go to coffeescript.org, go to try CoffeeScript and just type it in on the left side and it'll show you like, for instance, to create like this right here in CoffeeScript. Okay, so let's, um, let's try to put this out like so. Okay, so let's rebuild this real quick with CoffeeScript so you get an idea. What I would do is I would say select. So this doesn't change because this is JavaScript. On change, and let me remove that parenthesis. On change, I'm creating a function. And inside of here, I'm getting the quantity is equal to this dot value. And my price is equal to 1.0. And I'm saying this dot parents, and this line actually right here, well, make sure I don't lose it. This right here is not going to change. Now, what you can see here is this is pretty much all JavaScript. You don't have to add, you can omit the parentheses. And the reason I like that here is, um, this doesn't need to be here. The reason I like omitting the parentheses in this is because otherwise I'd have one here and then I'd have a really weird one over here. And I just don't like that. So I omitted it. Basically, you can see how this compiles. You, it just turns this into the first parameter of the on method. And then this right here evaluates to a function call or creates a function. And it's all indention based. And this is going to create two variables. 
this is going to create this executable here or whatever. It's going to execute this. Uh, the other thing to note in Backbone, the very last line of every method is returned, which is really nice because you don't you can you don't have to force or manually type return. And I really I've never really thought about if you do this, you get to return. So whatever. So this is that's basically what's going to happen when you see me type something in. You don't really know the coffee script of it. Just come over here and type it in. You'll see it. Um, but this is pretty much as I think this is kind of the most advanced part of coffee script. Um, the real quick though, the other thing in coffee script is that you the et sign translates back over to um, this. But in cases like this right here, I don't think that works very well. So I would type out the full this. Okay, so. CoffeeScript.org, try CoffeeScript, type it in when you don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we don't need this JavaScript anymore. This is outdated or it's no longer being used. And I'm going to create a new JavaScript file for my um, order items. So order items.js. And I'm going to create that is order items.coffee. And if I refresh CodeKit, you'll see that it's going to automatically convert this back to orderitems.js. So it's a pretty cool little tool. And I'm going to unminify it just so we can make sure that uh, oh, we can still read it or whatever. In case, but I pretty much never do that. So what we're going to do is CoffeeScript really changes a couple of things. And what we're going to do is create an order items view. So the order items view is just what contains this table row here. So we're going to say order items view extends from our backbone view. Now, basically, what CoffeeScript is doing here is it's creating a variable called order items view, and it's using a special extends function that comes with built in to CoffeeScript. And basically, all the methods and properties and stuff that are defined on Backbone, this actual view object, are going to get delegated and put back onto here, or the other way around, I guess. But basically, this it's basically just like if PHP, you want to extend a class, and it's going to pull methods down from here and properties and stuff. And you initialize this one, and you get stuff off of this one. It's, it's kind of cool. So the way I'm going to do this... And it's the way I like doing CoffeeScript, or I'm sorry, Backbone. Whenever I, when I do normal jQuery, it's kind of like, when I, where I'm sorry, when I used to do jQuery by itself, and I still do jQuery by itself, a, a Backbone isn't good for everything. But I, I usually do it like this. And Backbone says, no, don't do that. You have to create a view for this. And it's really hard, like, well, how do you do a view? And where do the where does the view get its information to understand how to interact with it and stuff and I, the way I like doing it is with this JSON attribute and I think I already mentioned it in this video but basically you just output some JSON in here uh, PHP's equivalent like Rails you just have to say like order item dot to JSON and that gets created but in PHP what I would do and I haven't tested this but I would just say something like uh, HTML entities on JSON encode for an order item and that should get you something pretty close to this uh, so there you go a little snippet so and you might want to create a function called like safe JSON or something like that that would be even better I guess so what we're going to do is I want to iterate over each one of these table rows and pull all the information about it with it from this JSON. Now the reason I'm doing I want to do it that way is because you know the JSON or the backbone view it works with a single element. So if I just go ahead and loop through these table rows, and the reason I like this is that it feels very natural to me. Just, I've always done it where the server generates the HTML and it puts out things like where it pulls this title from the database and it pulls out the price and formats it here and it generates this select menu and I, it feels very natural to me and it's the way I've always, I've done it for so long I guess, I haven't always done it this way, but I've done it for so long, it's the way I want to keep doing it. So I want to be able to work with existing HTML and add backbone. And this, I guess this isn't the way everybody says to do it. Uh, some people say if you're starting on a brand new project, you should do it this way. And if you're, this is what I'm going to show you kind of the way you do it with an existing project. But I think this is a very maintainable solution. Of course, I've only been doing it for two weeks, so 
<laughs> what I think is maintainable might not be. What we're going to do is we have this, and what I'm going to do here is just say for my T body within my order items table, I want to find all the table rows and I want to loop over each one of them. And what I want to do with each one of these is I want to pull out the items data. So that's going to come from this dot uh, data for the JSON. Now, when jQuery runs this and it pulls this actual data attribute or this JSON attribute or data, J whatever you call it, it's actually going to parse it and give you the actual JSON, which I think, which I think is very cool. So if I actually pull up my console real quick, run through this again, or run, load this, you can actually see we have a real JavaScript object, which I think is just amazing that jQuery does that. So we pull this out, and the only thing I want to change is the, you can see the price is a string. To fix that, we say item uh, dot price equals plus item dot price, and that's going to convert that to an integer. Okay, so we have this item, and what I want to do don't need the semicolon. What I want to do is create a new view and I want to pass this item to it. So I'm just going to say new order items view and I'm going to say item data is equal to my item. And what I'm going to do to capture that is Backbone gives you the, an initialize method that lets you capture options. And if we look at those options, you'll see that we actually get this item data and it equals what we passed into it. So it's really cool because this is not JavaScript. This is Backbone's special mapper or whatever uh, overlaying thing on JavaScript. This is real JavaScript. I know it's written in CoffeeScript, but if I look at this, you can see um, this is probably not the way you'd write it in real life or <laughs> it without CoffeeScript, but basically you can see it's creating our order items variable, item, order items view variable. It's defining it as a function, and it's adding the initialized prototype or method on this. And Coffee or Backbone automatically sets it up where when you initialize this, it goes ahead and runs this method, and it passes wherever you pass in here to here. So it's it's just really cool stuff. So what we want to do is we also need to capture the element itself because right now we're not this view has no idea what it's connected to. So what we can do is we can just say the element of here is this and this is the current context of this each loop, I guess. Now here's cool, here's something pretty cool. While element right here is getting passed into options, backbone automatically sets this dot element and you can see that. So this dot element is our actual table row. And Backbone also gives us the jQuery version of that is this dot dollar L. And you could do it like this I, or with just an at sign. I prefer not to do that. But you can see we have the jQuery object and it's really hard to tell that's jQuery I guess but you can see it says jQuery version right there so there you go. So what we want to do with this is we want to capture the select change right here. And the way you do that in Backbone is traditionally you would probably do something like this. You would say this side L because we want the jQuery version. Find the select box inside of it on change. And we're going to lose that change. And I want to log, you know, um, oh, this dot value right here. So if I change this, you can see we get five. This is not a good way of doing it because Backbone actually does sets your sets you up because this view right here, it's only contain your this view right here works with just this element, just this table row right here. So instead of having to work with a traditional style of your whole page is your view, if you will, what you can do is you can define events on here, and these events apply. Well, this this failed, but events apply only to what's in this view. So what I can do in here is say, when I change my select, I want to run this function that logs this.val. And we'll lose this so we don't get that run twice. And when I change this, and we get a weird bug that I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I know what it is. It's... Um, I've actually never written in a thing like this before. Um, 
what we're going to do instead, <laughs> you can, this defines a function that gets called, you saw, whenever you change the select, it runs this and it blows up. What we need to do, what I'm going to do instead, you don't have to do it this way, but I prefer it. I'm going to define a method on here called update the quantity. And down here, we're just going to find update quantity. And you can see what this is doing is it's mapping this. Let's just, I'm going to show you the source because I think it's kind of, I think it's really cool the way Backbone does this. Uh, backbone. View. Um, we want to look at this delegate events. This is what's actually pulling the events from this object, which is this right here. You can see it's looping through each one of these. And then it splits the event right here. So it grabs it, splits it by the space. It grabs the event name, event name, and it grabs a selector. And what it does, is it says if the selector is blank. So if I just leave, if I left this blank, the event actually applies to this element. But because I've so because I've added the selector, instead it's going to delegate to the element's selector. So when I change my select, it runs the method that I define. I think that is very cool stuff. So, what we want to do, oh, but the thing is, when it does this, the context, if we look at this, so this is right here, this line of code, you know, we kind of wrote something like this before, right here, where I said this right here. And, you know, this, the context of this function was of our select. But what you're going to see is the context of when I run this function is I got order items view. Even though Backbone is still running kind of the same jQuery stuff, but it's it's actually binding it through underscore. So when I run this and I change this number or change this quantity, you can see we have our order items view. So the question is, well, how do I grab this select? And some ways, the way I originally did it a long time ago, when I first started learning Backbone, two weeks ago, a long time ago, it was I said target. target. And if you do this, you'll see that it grabs that select. But this is kind of bad. No, no, don't do this. Because, I mean, in some cases, I, I, I might still do this, and I don't think it's really a big problem. However, because of the way ours is set up, we don't have to do it that way. Because what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a method called memoize DOM. And this method is just going to, I've, I've created this method like this because sometimes you'll do other things where you need to memoize the DOM or reset it if you ever reload your view and stuff. So, or re-render it as Backbone people might call it. So I define this method and basically every time I run this, I want to refine various elements. In one, this case, I want to refine my select. So I'm going to say select field is equal to this.element.find the select. And if we get inside of here and we log our select field, you're going to see we have a jQuery object version of our select field right here. So what we can do with this is we can grab that value. So I'm just going to say that my uh, quantity is equal to a plus sign for this, oh, that's not that, select field dot value. And let's grab the price as well. And we have the price from this item data, so we need to store that off. So we'll just say this dot item data, or item is going to equal to our options dot item data. And what I'm going to do is just say my price is item dot price. And we're also going to need to update this little field here, so let's add that here. A little bit of setup. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long. It is item total. So item total uh, box, I guess, is equal to this dot element dot find item total. And what we're going to do is just say item total box dot text is going to equal accounting dot format money for our quantity times our price. And we reload and we come back to the page and you can see now it's actually formatting this money. And if I do, or formatting this total, and if I even do this one, which we've never tested before, you can see this one works as well. So that's pretty cool in my opinion, how we've done this. And the reason I like this is it's object oriented 
And because the way Backbone and CoffeeScript work together, Backbone does this all without CoffeeScript. The way back, Backbone works is it really makes it easy to do the refactoring that so many people talk about where methods should only do one thing. And you can see, when we're initializing, all we're doing is initializing the whole class. We're not actually doing anything that's of any importance. All we're doing is saying, we have some item daddy that we need might need later, and we're also memoizing our DOM, and this method, all it does is memoize the DOM. And we have an event that's separated and all kept in a tidy little place. When we actually change this, we update the quantity. Now here's where we're actually breaking a rule. This method is not only grabbing the quantity and stuff, but it's also updating the total. A better name for this would be update total. But I want to refactor this some more. So what is something that we are doing here that could probably be changed? Well, we are working with a piece of data, in this case this item, that really is uh, its own thing, that um, its own piece uh, object of the system, if you will. And in this case, it is an order item. So what I want to do is I want to create a new object called order item. And this extends from backbone model. And this backbone model is, this is all we need to make this work. And what I'm going to do is, once I have this model, I want to create it. So I'm just going to say order item equals new order item. And I'm going to pass in the item here. Now, what this will do is it's going to pass in the JSON that is pulled from here, the, the, J, the JavaScript object. And it's going to create a model for it. And we're just going to take a look at it real quick before we actually do anything special. So you can see we have this order item. And if we view the attributes on this object, you can see it's pulled the price out, it's pulled the quantity and the title here. And the way we can get information off of that is we can say order item dot get price. So it's actually created getter and setters for us on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass our new model here. We're just going to say, instead of passing an item data like this, instead we're going to say model is our order item. And the way Backbone works is the same way we don't have to manually set this to our instance. We also don't have to set model. Models automatically, when you pass this in, set in here as model. So we can lose that line of code. And for the price, we're going to change this to model.getPrice. And this should still work out of the box. And you can see it does. So what do we need to do next, I guess? Well, because we're working with this model, we can use a thing called events. And an event in Backbone is very, very important and crucial to the whole system. And the reason I say it's very important and crucial to the whole system is because if you actually look at the source, this annotated source is just lovely. I love this thing. So Backbone defines as Backbone events. And if you look at the source code for Backbone model, you'll notice that it extends itself from Backbone events. And if you look at the source code for Backbone collection, it extends itself from Backbone events right here. And guess what? If you look at a view, it extends from, guess what? Backbone events. So what does that tell you? Backbone events are very, very important to the whole system of Backbone. And that means that all of them can interact with each other with this events set up. And so we're going to do that. We're going to actually use some backbone events in this. So how do we want to do this? Well, because we have this getter and setter, we can change some of this around. So let's comment these two out. We're going to pull our quantity out like this. And I'm going to say model.set price to our, I'm sorry, not price, our new quantity to our quantity that we pulled out of this uh, model here, or I'm sorry, out of this field. Now, when you do this setter here, let's just take a look and look at our model. So I update the quantity here. Mo Backbone has changed. So you see we have this changed attribute here, or this changed method or whatever, or property. 
and it says we change the quantity to two and the attributes for quantity is two here oh 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 this needs to be the fully written out quantity okay that there we go this should fix it uh so it works better you can see the attributes have changed um that's weird That is not good. Why is it not changing our quantity? There we go. I think I didn't save the file or something. Or reload the page, I think. One of those two. Okay, so let's just run through this again. I changed this right up here. And this didn't happen because Firebug... I'm sorry. <laughs> Firebug, I might as well call it. Firefox persist your inputs and stuff so when you reload the page you don't lose all the data which is kind of cool I guess but I really dislike it for development um, because while it's showing me for the system is registering to or the code so let's do this again after a forced reload if I go to 4 you can see that it's changed the quantity attribute you can see the current attributes right here is 4 the previous attributes are 2 so you, you can kind of keep up with this and you can see what's changed and stuff but I don't know why I went through all this to show you, but basically what's happening is because Backbone's keeping up with this change, it's firing an event on this model for change. So if we actually do this, we can actually say, listen to, um, and this is actually coming from, because Backbone's object-oriented and all that fun stuff, m events have this listen to right here. And I can say object, listen to another object, and when the event is fired on that ob the object, use my callback. So you can see the view is listening to the model, exactly what we're doing right here. When I change this model, I want to do something here. So I'm listening to my model. When I change my model, which is what's happening right here, which let's remove this line of code, which is happening right there, I want to fire a custom function or whatever that I'm going to write right here and just say console log hi. So we can actually see that this is working. So I change this to a new value and I get high. So what we can do with this is we can actually pass in. We can say that we want to update our total. So we're going to say update total as a function. And let's just pull out our model quantity and our models price and check this out. You can see we the quantity is 3 and the price is 1. So already we've, we're separating some code. The qu update quantity method is only updating the quantity. And our actual class for the view is listening to the model, which this is where it belongs, where it's initializing and setting all this stuff up. When we change our model, then we run our own update total function. And here we're able to grab that quantity and grab that price. So let's run this line of code right now. So the quantity is going to be model.getQuantity, model.getPrice. And we can remove this line of code. We can also remove all of this. So if I change this, you can see now this is running still, and this is running. So this is a pretty cool little thing, in my opinion. The way we've set this all up, we're able to update our model here and our model is not even connected to anything this is what i think is very cool about backbone is if you will this is all in memory on the site this is not connecting to my backbone my i'm sorry my actual server and i think this is the way it should be done now some people are probably gonna i'd love i'd love to read some i'd love to get to a debate not a debate i don't want to flame more or whatever just you know if you have a different opinion on this i like to hear it um, but I really like the way this works, where everything's in memory. I pull it down from the server, I hand it to the client, and the client's able to handle all the view update changes and keep up with this kind of information. Um, I, I'm not a strong believer in the whole idea that we should keep our front end and back end up to sync, you know, just like super, you know, every few seconds. And every time something changes, we need to update on the server and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I really like the way this works. So what do we want to do now? Well, we're working with this model. We're pulling out this price and quantity. What I'd love to do is say model, 
let's pull this out. I'd love to say model.total here. So we're going to do that. We're going to define a method on here called total. And we're just going to return get price and get quantity times price. And backbone automatically returns, like I said earlier. So we do this, we run, and you can see this is still working. And I think that is just super cool that we have this model. Like, you, I mean, PHP does this all the time. You, dis, you, def, you create an object you, or a class, you just put these things in there, you initialize it, and you're able to interact with it. And this is something you just don't see very often with jQuery or JavaScript. And it's really, really fun to be able to have it. So I love the way this code works right now where we have we're working with this view we change it we update the model because we update the model our view realizes that it says oh we need to update the total too and now we're updating this total box or that we're updating this total we're formatting it and how are we doing that how are we getting the new number well the model it the model automatic already has this information it can give us information in a different and get us this kind of thing right here so i think that is really cool so what I want to do now, now that we're able to get this going, I'd like to add collections. And I'd like to set it up so that I can display the subtotal, and it would automatically just add these two together and put it down here. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to create a, t, a table footer and a table row with a call span, or a table column with a call span of four, I believe it is. And I'm going to do the deprecated align right, but I don't want to grab all the CSS and stuff. So in here, I'm going to set my subtotal is in strong, and I'm just going to do the subtotal like this. And just to be now quick, I'm just going to put this out like so. And we know this is wrong, but as soon as we change it over here, it will be correct. And uh, we may make that work better, a little bit better or it won't be better, but we may make this actually pull from here and stuff. So let's go ahead and set this up. So how do we grab these two models so that we can get their subtotal by adding up their totals? Well, that's where collections come in. Uh, I think I already uh, told you we're doing collections, so that's probably not that helpful but or fun. But we're going to do an order items collection. And this extends our backbone collection. And that's all we need to do to make this work. We don't have to do anything else. And I, I think that's really nice that we can define this object that can contain stuff. But we don't have to do a lot of prep work to make it work. We can just remember the name and stuff. So the one thing, the only thing that's going to change a little bit is we only want one collection. We can have multiple order items. We can have multiple views. But we only want one collection. So... Before we actually iterate over this, I'm going to say new, I'm sorry, um, order items, plural, is new order items collection, like so. And this might be better like so. Okay, so we get this order items collection going. When we create an order item, what I want to do is I want to say order items dot add our order item to this. And what it'll do is, as we create this order item, it's going to push it to the list. And we look at our order items. You can see that first it runs through, it's one, then it runs through, and it's two. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pass our collection. Just like we can pass element model, we're going to pass our whole collection to our, our, to our view. So what we want to do is when we update the total we want to update this right here so the way i'm going to do this is i'm just going to say our total totals plural equal and oh this fails so what we're going to do here is we're just going to say our collection dot map and what i'm going to map is i'm going to map is just going to go over each item in the array uh, and the way backbone works is collections collection dot map like this is actually going to give you each model and we want to return each model's total. So if I look at this totals variable or array, and I change this to 5, you can see it's pulled out the 5 from here, and it's pulled this out. And if I change this to 10, you can see it's pulled out this number here as well. 
So what we're going to do is we need to sum this up. We need to add all of these together. And underscore gives us a great little uh, utility for that. So we're going to say subtotal equals underscore dot inject. Now this is actually called reduce, but in my opinion, and I, I well, a lot of this comes because I like Ruby. Ruby has the inject method. If I see this, I'm going to know what this is. But uh, you can actually go and see. Um, this actually comes from underscore. You have this reduce right here. Um, and basically, you give it a list, which we're giving right here. We're going to say totals. And we're going to pass in a, an iterator, which is our function and stuff. So let's actually do this real quick. So I want to lose the parenthesis. So we're going to have a sum, and we're going to have a number here. And what I want to do is just say sum plus our number. And now if we look at our subtotal, you're going to see that it's basically these two things added together. So let me force reload so these selects go back to normal. And you can see it's 104 or 105. And you can see how this works. So it's, it's, it's very cool, I think, how this is able to just loop over all these items and give you a subtotal. And the last thing that we're going to do is for this, I'm, the video's not done yet. It's a four minute video and we're not done yet. What we're going to do is we're going to save out our subtotal field. It's not a field, but I think that's fine. And we're going to say find our subtotal right here. I'm just going to drop this field. And I'm going to pass it into our view. So subtotal and we are going to set that to our subtotal. And right here, I'm going to just save this off. So before I minimize my DOM, I'm just going to say subtotal equals subtotal and options dot subtotal. And this actually is, I, you might say, well, this goes in the minimize DOM, but it really doesn't because this is already found. Um, this, this only applies to each view, so they're separate. And what we're going to do is just say that our subtotal dot text is going to equal our accounting dot format money for our subtotal. And we run this through, reload the page. If I change this number, you can see it automatically applies over here. So I think this is really cool. I mean, it just makes me really happy to be able to have code that just works together like this and just can do all this fun stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I want to refactor this little bit right here because this particular bit of code needs to be on the collection. And so I can just say collection dot subtotal. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say we're going to have a method called subtotal and it's basically going to return this right here. And I'm just going to say subtotal equals collection dot subtotal. And uh, in a second, I'm well, I'll just do it right now, collection.subtotal. Okay, so we're just going to throw this in here, and we can drop this part right here. And this can actually drop down to just map for the model and get the total, and then we're going to loop over each one of these totals and sum them up and get us a subtotal of all these models. So with that refactor done, you can see I'm able to still change through these things, and it just updates the view automatically. I, I just, this just kind of, Cody just gets me excited, I guess. It just makes me smile. And this is one of those things that just really makes me happy. Just seeing how we're able to just iterate over some items. We create an object for each one of them. I love object-oriented programming. I know people are like, well, now we need to do functional programming because functional program does blah, blah, blah. Um, and I don't really know functional programming. And the way they say you can't learn it overnight, you have to go through a bunch of years of school and all this stuff to really understand it. Which, I, I really like some of the things that function, whatever. Um, let's just go back to this. So I really like this object-oriented approach for this. And I like the way things like for events are contained here because this is a view that maintains everything that happens within here. It allows me to just memoize this DOM node, these DOM nodes like this. What happens if you, if this kind of thing bothers you, like, you know, don't try to find the same select more than one or two times. Um, 
I my numbers too. I imagine a good number probably three. If you're trying to find the same element three times on a page, you need to find a way to store it off like this. In this particular case, we're only using it here, but the update quantity might change a lot. And if that's the case, then I like the idea of it's found once and I always use the same one every time. So I like that. Uh, this one might not work very well because it's delegating with on right here, which uh, may not be the best solution here. Um, but I, I, in my opinion, I think it, well, I like this. This is fine. I don't think this is a problem. Um, so I really like the way this works. You can just see that we change the select, we run one function, it updates the total. When this model updates, then we update our view. Now the benefit of doing this is if you have outside elements that update this model here, well guess what? The view still updates. You could have a button that said increment Reese's by one. Click. This goes to three. This changes. This changes. I like that kind of thing, that this is all contained here, and it happens because of this right here. I love the I, I love the fact that I can just say model.total, and it runs this method. This method's really short. It's very simple, but it does exactly one thing. It gets the total, multiplying the quantity and the price. And same thing with the subtotal. This is very simple code, in my opinion. I mean, it, it's a little bit longer outside, but underscore seems to do a pretty good job of writing good code. So... Um, and I want to show it to you, well, yeah, I can get to it quick. I really love the each method in underscore right here, because guess what? It maps to for each, which is kind of new. Not all browsers support it, but if it doesn't have that, then it loops over each one, and then it does this if it's an object. I mean, I just think that kind of stuff is cool. So that is the end of this video. The last thing, I've, well, I say it's the end. The, the only thing that's really bad, I think, is this part right here. Because this part gets, in, this code right here gets executed every single time a page is loaded. Um, because, you know, the new thing to do, and it's, it's a really good thing to do. It's not just like this trend. You know, minify all your JavaScripts and only have one JavaScript file that's loaded. Well, when you do that, well, how do you determine what views get loaded, right? I mean... And that's really where this whole routers thing comes in. And basically what you say is, um, I would do this. I would say class, um, order, page, router, something like this. It's not a very good name, but it's all I have at the moment. This extends from backbone.router. And what happens is I'm matching a route. And so now this doesn't work locally, and I'm not entirely sure why. But I want to match this table example page. So table example.html. I'm sure you're wondering why didn't he just copy that? And we have the order form page and this right here. And this gets run. Now, the cool thing about Backbone is you can have as many routers as you want on a page. Like most like MVC frameworks, you have one routes file and you define all this stuff. and in JavaScript with this, it's a little different. You define a router that only contains the code per type of page. So this is the orders page. And when I'm on my table here, and I know I'm on a form, which this is where you would do something like, you know, like orders new or orders show or orders by the ID or something like that. And you're viewing an individual order, but mine's not like that. But we'll do, we'll do it like this anyways. So we're viewing, in, or this is really more of like maybe checkout or you're viewing your card or something like that and you want to change these numbers here and click a button that says update cart. This is what a router does, is when you're viewing an individual page, you 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 initialize these order item, these col this collection, this item order model, this view, and this code only gets run here. And if you look at this and you think, well, why do you do that? Well, because this is replacement for the idea of taking this same code and having to inject it right here. And this, to tell this to only run on this table page right here. So I am I really dislike having to write JavaScripts actually into my page. I'd much rather put them into an external file for obvious reasons, one of them being just that they're easier to find. That's really the, <laughs> That's really the only one. Um, it's easier to find. I know where to look for. I'm on this table. I need to go to a view file for order items and stuff, or whatever. 
So that's what routers do. Routers let you um, pull them out and just run the JavaScripts and initializers and all that stuff that's specific to that page. The last thing I want to show you is the way Rails does this, or Backbone Rails. And there's a, I'm, get, I'm, I'm sure there are a bunch of different ways to do this. However, I really like the way Backbone on Rails, I guess, is the one. I really like the way they do this. And if I actually open up the Railscast code and all this stuff, so it's a little bit of a long walk. Oh, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. Go back, go back. Come on. What I really like about the way they set this up, and this is the way I've been using it, and I really like the way this works. So you have this JavaScripts folder, and basically you create this your a, we're a namespace for your whole application. So Ryan Bates in this video, he did a raffling system, and um, I don't want to show you too much because I don't want to uh, mess up with the whole premium thing or paid subscription. But you can do this anytime. You don't have to be logged. You don't even have to be logged in to see this. So I don't feel bad showing you this. Basically, Backbone on Rails to creates this namespace for Raffler, and you have multiple namespaces underneath for like models, collections, views, and routers. Now, he set his router up like this. So he defined a router called Entries, namespace in the router's namespace, I guess. <laughs> what I found works really good with this type of code right here. So you, let's just copy this whole thing and drop it over here. What I do instead in my applications is I say this or underscore dot each and this dot routers and we'll do routers like this this will give me a router back and I just say new router like so now this allows me to create as many routers as I want and as long as I'm namespace them under this like raffler dot like this would be raffler dot routers like this I, as long as I put them under this namespace Backbone on every page load will automatically load all of these. And then Backbone's going to take over and say, well, our, our URL matches this, then we're going to load this JavaScript, which in turn would load, these would be a namespace into view, model, and all that kind of stuff. So they can be separated into multiple files, and they can still be um, access, have access to each other and stuff. So this is a really good system. I don't know if everyone in Backbone already does this or not, um, because I don't have a lot of experience there. But in Rails on or Backbone on Rails, this whole f library or framework or gem or whatever you want to call it, the way it sets you up, I think, is a really good way of doing this. Um, in fact, well, I yeah, this is this is how I'd always do it. If even if I wasn't using Rails, I'd figure out a way to make this work. Um, which using CodeKit, you could just say import m all the model directory files, I think, probably, um, and stuff like that. So this would work pretty easily. That's all I got. So if you have any questions or things, uh, let me know. I'd love to talk about this kind of stuff because I'm really into Backbone now that I've been playing with this. So goodbye. <laughs>